Hey guys, so it's 725.23 at nine o'clock this morning. I got this second Pentecost, directive number two and the end. So I woke up, I took a nap and I woke up to CC Winans Fire live from the Believe For It album. I heard that in my head, except the Holy Spirit started changing the words. So if you want to stop and listen to that, so you get a gist for the um, melody and the meaning of that song, because what is happening in that song will be happening here soon. This is what I got. I got lyrics and then that flowed into a prophecy that flowed into the directive. And then I was told certain verses and a prophecy from a different generation to give out to you today. Okay, so here we go. Fire, fire, fall on us now. Lord, just like you did it before, Lord, you will do it again. Fire, fire, Lord, fall on us now. Fire, fire, Lord, do it again. Baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Bring it again, just like the day of Pentecost. Lord, do it again. Give us the Holy Spirit's fire. Do it again. The light replaces the darkness. The darkness has heard it but now it will hear and listen. A second Pentecost is coming. The truth is about to be revealed in who burns with God's Holy Spirit. It will be visible on my bright ones. My holy power is about to show its face in ways never seen. All hearts will be revealed. Those with my holy power will be obvious. This will change the hearts of the prodigals and many half-borns will begin their process of coming to me. Keep praying the chains off of those who need me. Continually pray. This is how my holy power spreads. The miracles to come and the hearts to be changed need continual prayer. Church, continue to pray. Do not relent. In days, not weeks, in your time, my holy power will fall upon the earth. Those with me will be known. The evil and darkness begin their move, but so do I. My prayer choir will prove to be the element they cannot control. Your continuous prayers around the clock every day will change hearts and minds. Your prayers will bring the largest harvest ever seen. Raise them up, church. Never relent. Not until the last soul is swayed and you are all raptured to me. I am pleased with all of you who have been following my request to pray for your spouses, family, and friends. This will change the world. This will save millions from their previous direction. This will allow millions to also shine with my Holy Spirit and be untouchable by the Antichrist. Pray without ceasing, church. My prayer choir is my prayer army. You will see miracles. You will see people change. You will have my full protections by marching on in prayer. The Holy Spirit is going to spread like wildfire. Only the wicked and the most stubbornly rebellious will not find me. The bumpy terrain to soon come will be brief, but also be the agent that helps many half-borns come to me. Stand firm, be my witnesses, stand strong in my truth. Do not be swayed by what happens around you. Rely solely on me. Continual prayer will be noted and those doing so will be protected. Do not fear. I am yours and you are mine. You will be my evidence. Be open to being used beyond prayer, but always continue to pray. My fire is about to spread and touch the ends of the earth. My anointed will begin and spread it through my faithful and they will spread it on to the ends of the earth. Rejoice, the time is now. Raise your weapons of prayer. The enemy is being defeated as you do. Then I was given a few verses to tell you and then also discuss. So um, I want you to notice that in these verses, continual prayer 
happens and then something significant happens, okay? And I was also told to break it down from the Greek so that you guys have a full understanding of what these words mean. So Acts 2, 42 to 43, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. To continue steadfastly, to attend to constantly, to wait upon, to persevere toward interactively with, to endure and remain firm, staying in a fixed direction. Then um, prayers, a prayer to God, to properly exchange wishes, which is also a form of worship to pray in earnest. Then um, wonders, a miraculous wonder that elicits a reaction from onlookers, an extraordinary event with supernatural effects left on all who were witness to it. And then signs, a sign or miracle given especially to authenticated person by exalting the one giving it, God, for his eternal purposes. Okay, so they continue steadfastly in prayer and then many wonders and signs come upon every soul, okay? Then Acts 6, verse 4 and 7. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And then verse 7, then the word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied greatly. So none of those are new words, but what is interesting is first continual prayer, then multiplied. That's what's going to happen for us. Acts 4, 31 and 32. And when they had prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitudes of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did any one say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they all had things in common. So to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to fill to the maximum, to fill to one's individual maximum capacity. So yes, you have the Holy Spirit. You're a Christian, you've been baptized, you have the Holy Spirit, but now you're going to get a maximum filling. That's going to give you the opportunity for miracles, protections, everything else. Then, um, they spoke with boldness. This is an interesting. Confidence and boldness, especially in free speech, leaving a witness of something that deserves to be remembered. Open, frank, public speech with fearless, cheerful courage, impelling someone to do something. So those are the verses I was told to give you. But then I was told to give you a um, prophecy. Now, you have to understand that Coming into this whole entire ministry, I was not a person that would be open to listening to other people's prophecies. I thought that was heresy. So obviously the Lord did a work in me and he thinks it's really funny because now I get words of prophecy. <laughs> but um, this was first given to me by Nick. He's on my team. And um, this is called Tommy Hicks Vision 1961. And, um, I was, I read it when Nick gave it to me and I was like, oh, that's cool. But I didn't really put a lot into it. And then after I got the prophecy on 6, 4, 23, it's called hear the word of the Lord. And after the rapture dream, um, then I was told to reread that. Like it, I was literally told, go back and find that prophecy and reread it because that's what this prophecy is related to. And I was like, oh, okay. And I reread it and it was like alive. I was like, oh my gosh, this is 100% exactly everything I've dreamed. This is everything that's happening. So then today, when I got this one, I was told that I need to share this Tommy Hicks vision with everyone so that everyone understands that this is how it's going to happen and your prayers are the way that this happens so um you will see in this that the holy spirit is spread it is liquid drops of light and that is spread you are to be reminded 
to stay steadfast in prayer because the prayer is the agent that allows all of this to happen. And I was told to tell you that you were chosen to be a prayer warrior in this time. Long before most of you were born, long before I was born, Tommy Nix in 1961 was given this prophecy. Now, I did not know until today that he was given this prophecy in 1961 on July 25th, the day I'm putting this out. I was like blown away that it's the same exact date. So let's get into Tommy Hicks' vision. Okay. I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and revelation that God gave me came before me. The vision came three times, exactly in detail, the morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that it has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the last end time ministry. The greatest thing that the church of Jesus Christ has ever been given lies straight ahead. As the vision appeared to me, after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself in a great distance. Where I was, I do not know, but as I was looking down upon the earth, suddenly the whole world came into view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight from the east and the west and from the north and the south. And I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in. I was almost in fear and trembling as I stood to behold this great sight before me. At that moment, when the world came into view, it began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downward and I was facing north. Suddenly, I beheld what looked like a great giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic. It was so great in stature. His feet seemed to reach to the North Pole and his head to the South. His arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this was a mountain or whether this be a giant. But as I watched it, I suddenly beheld this great giant. I could see it was struggling for life to even live. His body was covered with debris from head to foot. At times, this great giant would move its body and act as if it would even rise up. When it did, thousands of little creatures would seem to run away. Hideous looking creatures would run away from this giant. When he would become calm, they would come back. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand toward the heavens and then it lifted its other hand. When it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from this giant and go out into the darkness. Slowly, this giant began to rise. And as he did, his head and hands went into the clouds. As he arose his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and the filth that was upon him. And as he began to raise his hands into the heavens, as though praising the Lord, as he raised his hands, it was even unto the clouds. Suddenly, every cloud became silver, the most beautiful silver I have ever known. As I watched the phenomenon, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it, I cried unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? I felt as if I was actually in the spirit and could feel the presence of the Lord even as I was asleep. From those clouds, suddenly, there came great drops of liquid light raining down upon this mighty giant and slowly, slowly the giant began to melt. It began to sink as if it were into the very earth itself. As he melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. This great rain began to come down. Liquid drops of light, as it were, began to flood the very earth itself as I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people over the face of the earth. And as I beheld the sight before me, people stood up over the world. They were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord. As that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes toward the heavens and I suddenly saw a figure in white. 
in glistening white, the most glorious thing I have ever seen in all of my life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. He stretched forth his hand upon the peoples and the nations of the world, men and women. As he pointed toward them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hand into these persons, and a mighty anointing of God came upon them, and those people began going forth in the name of the Lord. And this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people would stretch forth their hands exactly as the Lord did, and it seemed that there was the same liquid fire in their hands. And they stretched forth their hands, and they said, According to my word, be thou made whole. And as these people continued in this mighty ministry, I did not fully realize what it was. I looked to the Lord and said, What is the meaning of this? And he said, This is that that I will do in the last days. I will restore all that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar. I will restore all that they have destroyed. This, my people in the end time, shall go forth as a mighty army, and they shall sweep over the face of the earth. One of the things that seemed remarkable after I had viewed the vision so many times in my mind, I never saw a church and I never saw or heard anything of a denomination, but these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forward, everything they did was the ministry of Christ. These people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, yea, millions came to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of the coming of the kingdom in this hour. Suddenly, there was another loud clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world. I heard again the voice, the voice that seemed to speak. Now this is my people, and this is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth and I could see the lakes and the mountains. The graves were opened and the people from all over the world, the saints of all ages, seemed to be rising. And as they rose from the graves, suddenly all these people came from every direction and they seemed to be forming again this gigantic body. I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous. It was so far beyond anything I could have ever dreamed or think of. But... As this body suddenly began to form, it took shape in the form of this mighty giant. This time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle. As this body began to form, the people of all ages began gathering into this body. Slowly, slowly, as it formed up into the very heavens, suddenly from the heavens above, the Lord Jesus came and he became the head. I heard another clap of thunder that said, this is my beloved bride for whom I have waited. She will come forth even tried by fire. This is she that I have loved from the beginning of time. And that's the end of Tommy Hicks' vision. So what I was told to tell you is your prayers are going to release the Holy Spirit so it can spread and a healthy body of Christ can be collected at the rapture. So I hope this really encourages you. Um, you've got your marching orders and uh, we're bad out of here, peeps. Let's go. <laughs> See you next time.